Hey all, Kurt Sasso here from TGT Media at Fan Expo Canada 2013. You, we're joined today by Vivek. Uh, Tawari. Vivek Tawari, yep. <laughs> Thanks. And uh, of course, you are the creator of The Fifth Beetle, an amazing graphic novel. Thank you. And uh, what is The Fifth Beetle all about? Uh, the Fifth Beetle is based on the life of Brian Epstein, who is the man who managed the Beatles. Uh, Brian discovered the band when they were playing at the Cavern Club in Liverpool. They were a relatively popular Liverpool band. They weren't even the most popular Liverpool band. And, uh, you know, they were at a place in their career where no record label wanted to sign them. Um, Ed Sullivan wouldn't have dreamed of booking them. A British band had never made an impact in the United States. Uh, they really weren't going anywhere. And Brian was the guy that really believed in them. He convinced the record labels to sign them. He came up with the idea of the suits and the haircuts. He helped to make them more presentable to America and to a broader audience. And he really is, in, in many ways, the man who made the Beatles. It's a very, very uh, exciting and inspirational Beatles-related story. Um, and, uh, and that's all in the book and, it's, and if you're a Beatles fan you're in for a real treat with that but to me really the heart of the story is the human side of, of his story um, Brian was gay and Jewish and from Liverpool and in the 1960s those were three significant obstacles it was against the law to be gay he would have been thrown in jail if it had come out um, there was quite a bit of anti-Semitism in the UK and Liverpool was a, was a port town but there wasn't much going on culturally in Liverpool so for this gay Jewish man from Liverpool to be running around saying, I found a local band and they're going to be bigger than Elvis, it really was laughable. Um, so it's an incredibly inspiring human story. He was in many ways the ultimate outsider and he fought tooth and nail to, to bring the world the message of the Beatles. So it's a great story and I'm really excited to be telling it. How has uh, how is Brian Epstein and the Beatles influenced yourself when creating this book? Uh, you know, uh, I, um, I first discovered the Brian Epstein story when I was in business school about 20, 21 years ago. And I was dreaming about doing many of the things that I'm doing now. Uh, in addition to writing, I'm a, I'm a producer of film, television, and theater. Uh, so I do a lot of different things in the entertainment space. And when I was in business school, I thought if I'm going to be working in entertainment, I should study the lives of the great entertainment visionaries. And that's what led me to a study of Brian Epstein. Um, as I said, it was about 20 years ago, and there was no Wikipedia, there was no YouTube, there were none of these online resources. And quite frankly, there are no books about Brian Epstein in print. When The Fifth Beetle comes out in November, it will literally be the only book, graphic novel or otherwise, about Brian in print. Um, so you can imagine 20 years ago, I was kind of stunned uh, at how I couldn't find out more information about this guy. So it became like a little mystery that I was trying to uncover. And most of the research I did for this book, I did through interviews, tracking down people who knew Brian and getting them to talk to me about, about Brian and his life and times. Um, and for me, you know, I am, uh, I am of, in of Indian origin. I was born in New York City, but my parents are from Guyana, South America. Their parents are from India. And you don't see a lot of young people of Indian origin, of my ethnicity, kind of doing the things that I'm doing. So in a lot of ways, I've also felt like a little bit of an outsider in my chosen field. And so Brian's story, the struggles that he faced, really resonated for me. And I, and I, I should take a step back and say I, I definitely don't want to claim that I've had the obstacles in my life that Brian's had. Certainly I've not had that degree of obstacles. But I could still really relate to that kind of outsider status that really drove him. Um, so, so it's been a terribly inspiring story for me. No question, I'm a lifelong Beatles fan. Um, but, I, but I should say I'm also somebody that has been greatly inspired, not just by the Beatles, but by Brian. You know, this really is his story. Do you can sorry, I lost track there. Yeah. <laughs> Do you consider yourself successful? Do I consider myself successful? I, I have been very blessed with, with a great deal of success. I do. You know, I've been very, very successful with the Broadway shows I've produced. I recently produced Green Day's American Idiot and The Addams Family, both of which I'm incredibly proud of. Um, I produced Sean Combs and A Raisin in the Sun. Um, I've been very, very lucky. And before I was working for myself, I was working for record labels. Uh, I was at Mercury Records for three years, and I got to work with everyone from 311 and the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones to Shania Twain and Kiss. I've had a wonderful career, and I feel very blessed to have it. How do you deal with failure? I'm sorry? How do you deal with failure? You know, I don't really believe in failure. I believe that everything's a learning experience. When certain things don't work out the way you want it to, you just have to keep going. And in a lot of ways, that's, that's something Brian Epstein uh, you know, taught me. 
you know, every single record label in the business turned down the Beatles. And in fact, uh, he, EMI turned them down. He got a rejection letter. He did his research and he found out that there was one EMI a &R talent scout executive that was out of town on vacation when EMI turned them down. And so he was like, I got to get the demo tape to them, the demo record to them, you know, before he finds out that his company already passed. And that guy was George Martin. And George Martin was the guy that gave them a chance. And there's this fantastic letter that we printed in the book that basically from the head of EMI saying, I know we rejected your band and now we're accepting them and it's a little bit strange, but I hope you can understand that Talent Scout may occasionally make mistakes and we're happy to have the Beatles. You know, it's amazing. And, and to me, like, that's how I deal with defeat. If somebody says, like, you know, they don't like my show or, you know, it my show's not doing well enough or whatever it is, like, that's not defeat, that's a trial. And you just got to keep going. You just got to find another way to overcome that trial. The uh, younger generation are coming through, you know, they're, they're hearing the story, they're, they're going to read about the fifth Beatle, they're going to see that he overcame many obstacles, yeah. obviously, within his life and created a success, helped promote a successful band. And they, they're going to become inspired like you did researching Brian Epstein, but how can they become inspiring in their own right? Um, you know, I, it sounds awfully cheesy to say this, but I, I, I will often say that the fifth Beatle really is for anyone who's dared to believe in a dream. And, and that's what I hope people will get out of this book. I hope that, that when they finish reading this book, they will say, it, not only is it okay to dream, it's our responsibility on this, on this earth to dream, to have a dream and to chase it. You know, that's what I think this book is all about. And that's what I would tell, get, tell young people, if, if, you know, that is that, that believe in your dreams. I know that sounds awfully cheesy, but believe in your dreams and fight for them. That's what Brian Epstein did. He believed in his dream and his vision and he fought for it. And as a result, the world got the Beatles. And, uh, and to me, that's terribly inspiring. And, and, and Brian was an everyman, you know? I mean, that's why I say Brian's story is an inspiring human story. You will see yourself in Brian Epstein when you read this book. Uh, and I hope that, that my audience will be as inspired as I was. And uh, where can we find more information or even purchase the book when it's available? Uh, well, thank you for asking. Uh, the book comes out on November 19th in three different formats. Uh, there's a collector's edition with uh, 30 pages of, of rare Beatles and Brian Epstein memorabilia and an art gallery section. Uh, and a special textured cover, and then there's a limited edition, uh, signed and numbered. We're only making 1,500 of those, signed by myself and the two artists, Andrew Robinson and Kyle Baker. It also has an exclusive piece of art and comes in a slipcase. And all three editions are available on November 19th, although if I can plug them now, uh, they are available for pre-order, so you can get them immediately uh, through Amazon, uh, Barnes & Nobles, and IndieBound. Um, but they will be in stores everywhere on November 19th. And you can also find out more information about the book. We're also making a film uh, and all of that stuff. You can find out more information at our website, which is fifthbeetle.com. Uh, and we also have a Facebook page and a Twitter account. And we'd lo love for you to keep, keep tabs on what we're doing, especially with the film. There's a lot of really exciting things coming down the pike. Uh, and we're, we're going to be making some exciting film news soon. Um, if I can also take a minute to say that the, the biggest piece of news about the film, I'm very proud to report, is that we've got the sign-off of the Beatles uh, and, um, and did a deal with Sony ATV who control the music uh, publishing. And so it's a long-winded way of saying we have access to Beatles music for our film. We're literally the first and only film about the band in history to have gotten their sign-off and to have gotten music rights. Uh, so I'm very, very proud of that. And uh, I suspect within the next few months, we'll be also making another, another exciting piece of film news. So uh, releasing a piece of film news. So please keep your ears posted for that. Well, thank you so much, Vivek, and for taking the time to do this interview. And I, I really greatly appreciate it. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your convention. I can't wait to see this book and film. Thank you so much for having me. It's been, it's been great to be here at Fan Expo. It's actually the first time I'm able to uh, talk about the book to Canadian fans. Um, so it's a great thrill to be finally uh, bringing the book to Canada. So thank you for having me. You're watching TGT. Thanks so much. Appreciate it.